Hello, this tutorial on Schillinger instrumental forms demonstrates the creation of new parts from a given melody or harmony layer. Using an attack multiplication process you will obtain rhythmic and arpeggio patterns, more attacks with shorter durations. An overview of techniques is illustrated with examples. Let's get started. In this video tutorial you'll learn about Schillinger instrumental forms. The basic principle is a multiplication process applied to either melody or harmony. This process implies rhythm creation with an attack duration pattern overlay and yields more attacks with shorter note durations. We'll look at melody coupling, arpeggio patterns, harmony doubling and I'll use a strata harmony example to demonstrate these techniques. Instrumental forms are found in Book 8 of the two volume book set on the Schillinger system of musical composition. This almost 200 pages long book consists of 10 chapters. This diagram is an overview of the techniques for creating instrumental forms from that book. A multiplication process is applied to a source score, shown here as a three layer strata harmony example. Single part layers have melody or bass function and there are multi-part harmony layers. Various multiplication options are shown on the right. This applied form develops or modifies the quantities and forms of attacks and is related to orchestration. You'll meet the various techniques in a moment, but in general, through the creation of instrumental forms we obtain more attacks with shorter durations. We may add more parts to an existing score through melody coupling or harmony layer doubling. I'll use a single, carefully constructed strata harmony example as the source for instrumental forms. The original shows a melody at the top over a four part harmony layer that may be split into a bass part and three part harmony. The example has binary form with an A and B phrase and an ascending descending melodic curve rising to a second apex at the end. The example is in the key of C minor. The A phrase progression contains diatonic root movement and two pairs of Riemannian chromatic medians. The B section has tonic pedal point. Listen to a piano rendering. Let's start by doing nothing special and just assign a number of lead and background instruments. We obtain a basic setting with lead flute and piano and a sustained string section background. You will have been designing instrumental forms when adding instruments to an existing score such as this. A typical example is writing a timpani part for a given bass in the harmony, here the tonic pedal point in the B phrase. The original consists of whole notes, but in the timpani part we overlay an attack duration pattern using the half note as the basic time unit. We are in the bottom part of the overview diagram and the score illustrates how we have obtained more attacks with shorter durations and a specific rhythmical groove. A great classical music repertoire example with uniform rhythm, a set of pounding quarter notes for timpani and double bass is found in the tonic pedal point opening measures of the Brahms first symphony.
The next typical case is writing for a harp, using arpeggio patterns based on a given harmony layer, as shown here. The diagram shows various arpeggio pattern options, but here we start with single par patterns, a sequence of note attacks with either identical length or a more interesting non-uniform rhythm. Alternatively, create multi-part arpeggios, here two or three simultaneous attacks. Part attacks may be repeated and we may use chord inversions. Look at the uniform duration single part arpeggio patterns. The note attack sequence is based on part permutation and Schillinger spends two thirds of his book on listing all combination and permutation options for one to four part harmony layers, which does not make particularly interesting reading. For the constant duration single part arpeggio patterns derived from three part harmony we have six options. Proceed with combinations of two simultaneous parts and now we obtain three alternative options, again using constant duration and no attack repeats. Here is the combination of P1 and P2 followed by P3. We use P1 doubling at the higher octave, equivalent to chord inversion. We may also split the harmony layer into separate parts and two different instrumental forms. This example shows how the harp plays only the constant parts from the original chords as eight note arpeggios, while clarinet and horn play sustained chordal functions 5, 6 and 7. Again we use octave doubling of P1. The classical music repertoire is full of arpeggio instrumental form examples. You may also study Montugno patterns in Latin music. Selecting a set of arpeggios or other instrumental forms creates source material for writing, theme and variation compositions. Great for modifying and varying a film music main theme or change the mood in game music depending on player interaction. Let's return to the single part layer and see how we may add a coupled part to a given melody, a subject also discussed in the Strata Harmony tutorials. In the diagram, melody coupling is shown as a two step process. First the coupling, then the multiplication process with a rhythmic pattern overlay, again a type of arpeggio. In the example A phrase, I use an exact parallel major six coupling above the original melody. Next look at the creation of an instrumental form through attack multiplication. Here a non-uniform duration rhythm alternating between the two parts with 8 note time unit.
The final technique in the overview diagram, harmony layer doubling, will be demonstrated in the set of combined instrumental form examples that we will now turn our attention to. The score once again shows the original layers, to which I've added staves with new instrumental forms. Strings play constant 8-note two-part arpeggio patterns, quoting the opening movement from the Mozart Symphony in G minor. An upright jazz bass plays a 4 plus 3 plus 1 quarter note duration pattern. Note that the time unit in this part is different from the strings. The lead melody exact parallel coupling and instrumental form is copied from the previous example. The B phrase not only has a tonic pedal point, but also a constant pitch F4. The latter pedal point is played as constant duration 8th notes by electric guitar. The C pedal point in the bass receives a lower perfect 4th coupling, thus alternating between tonic and dominant. The rhythmical time unit now is the half note. Pay attention to this combination of instrumental forms in the audio rendering. Let's create an alternative instrumental form combination for symphony orchestra and start with a new technique that yields quasi imitation in a harmony layer. Take a rhythm pattern, here 3 plus 1 plus 8 eighth notes, and distribute this pattern successively over the string section groups, here moving from double basses to violas, then cellos and finally violins. In measure 5 the same technique is applied to the strings, but now the time unit is halved to 16 notes and the attack duration pattern is 2 plus 1 plus 1 plus 4. Double basses play a rhythmical augmentation. In measure 7 lower strings play uniform duration, 16th note, single part arpeggios, doubled in harp. Also the coupled lead part is turned into a 16th note time unit instrumental form but with non-uniform rhythm for violins. Since both upper and lower strings play 16th note patterns, synchronization and human player performance is demanding. My sample library rendering fails to maintain a steady 16th note groove. Different timescales in the instrumental forms for simultaneous parts would help the players and create a more transparent orchestration. The B phrase returns to an 8th note groove but with a dotted rhythm in quasi-imitation. The attack sequence has five elements, repeating one part three times and using all permutations. In brass, the 16th note rhythm, quasi imitation, is copied to a section with two trumpets, horn, trombone and tuba. The timpani part illustrates the changing time unit over the various subphrases. And here is the full orchestra setting with the combination of instrumental forms.
You may have noticed how the woodwinds in the eighth phrase played harmony layer octave doubling, an aspect I will discuss in more detail in the next example, also for orchestra. Now the quasi imitation of an eighth note rhythmical pattern is played by two woodwinds, clarinet and bassoon, with an independent bottom part for bass clarinet. Like in the previous example, in measure 5 there is harmony layer octave doubling. That is easily doable here, since there is a wide gap between the lead melody and the original harmony. As I've discussed in the strata harmony technique before, you should avoid pitch overlap and crossing between adjacent layers. With careful orchestration the effect can be disguised, but for transparency it is better avoided. The doubled harmony layer is turned into a constant duration 16th note arpeggio pattern over two octaves, alternating between violas and violins, and doubled in harp. Note how each arpeggio pattern lands on an on the beat target note. This allows easier alternation and synchronization between the two string groups. An illustration of this effect at much higher speed is found in the Tchaikovsky Nutcracker Suite March, where runs move through all string groups. The B phrase harmony is played by the strings as an interlocked imitation two part T plus T plus 2T pattern with 16th note groove. This instrumental form idea is picked up by violins when performing the latter half of the B phrase coupled lead melody. Note that for a climax effect there is also octave doubling at the end. The violins are accompanied by lower strings playing a uniform duration 8th note single attack arpeggio pattern. Now it's time for the full orchestra rendering. Note how this example combines both diatonic and exact parallel chromatic lead part coupling. Schillinger only discusses the latter option in his book. The concept of attack multiplication and instrumental forms obviously can also be applied to a setting with electronic instruments, as this final example will demonstrate. First, the diatonically coupled lead part is distributed over two interlocking synthesizers, one playing single part arpeggios at 16th note time unit, the other using 8th notes. The doubled harmony layer returns and now is transformed into descending 8 note triplet arpeggios over two octaves. The result is cross rhythm with the other synth parts, such as the 16th note arpeggio instrumental form applied to the exact parallel coupled lead part shown here. There's another triplet arpeggio in the B phrase harmony, this time descending quarter note triplets. These are played against 16th note arpeggio patterns in the coupled and octave doubled lead part. Listen to this combination of instrumental forms with cross rhythms for synthesizers.
and here is the full ensemble rendering. This tutorial presents an overview of the principles for generating Schillinger instrumental forms. You saw how attack multiplication was applied to melody and harmony layers. Additional melody parts are created through coupling. Multiplication yields a modified rhythm with more shorter duration attacks. Harmony layer instrumental forms yield many arpeggio pattern options using part combinations and permutation with constant duration or non-uniform rhythm attack patterns. Here new parts are obtained through octave doubling. You may write many variations of the source material by applying different instrumental forms, as I've demonstrated in the Strata Harmony example in this tutorial. If you like these tutorials, please subscribe to the channel. I share lots of free information, but also do welcome PayPal donations in support of video production. Go to my website for more content or purchasing ebooks. Stay safe and thanks for watching.